In Aspen Discovery, you have the ability to create placards, which are an amazing way to promote your resources and events, engage users with reader's advisory, and more. With placards, you can meet users where they're already going to spend a lot of time in the search results. Imagine you're a library user who's searching for books about hiking. And then a placard promoting your state park passes shows above the search results. Or maybe you're looking at books for your child and a placard for a special story time event appears. What about searching for those titles that are super popular and in demand? Wouldn't it be great to suggest a read-alikes for them on the spot while they're waiting for their hold? Well, with placards, you can link them out to a list of read-alikes. Now that you get the idea of how awesome placards are, let's learn how to make them. Head over to Aspen Administration. Scroll down to Local Catalog Enrichment. Then click Placards. From here, click Add New. Start by giving your placard a title. This doesn't display anywhere publicly, it's for internal use only. So if you have multiple scoped library catalogs sharing the same instance of Aspen, it's a good idea to put your library's name or code in the title so the super administrators who can see everything can see at a glance which placard belongs to which library. Next, you can schedule your placard if you like. This is great for promoting events, summer reading programs, seasonal content, etc. If you specify a start date, the placard won't show up to anyone until that date. If you specify an end date, the placard will no longer appear after that date. If you leave these fields blank, the placard will be available indefinitely. You can also check a box to make the placard dismissible. This just means that if a user is logged in and they see the placard, there will be a little X in the corner to close the placard and never see it again. Just keep in mind that if a user dismisses a placard, they will never see that placard again. So if you're planning to use a placard and just change out the content, say if you have a placard for your book club um, every month and you change out the book and the information, the user will never see it even if you have new content on that placard. Just something to be aware of. Next, the body section is where we can input and format our text. You also have the option to upload an image from within this editor, as well as upload an image down here. If you upload within the text editor, you have the ability to resize the image along with some other options. Whereas if you use the uploading option down below, it will retain the image size of whatever you upload it as. So make sure that your image is a reasonable size before uploading with this option here. Using this image uploader can be handy if you want to use text in your placard, since it will put the image you upload to the left and any text up here will go beside it to the right. So I'm going to paste in my text and then I'm going to upload my image down here. You can also drop in any CSS to style your placard here. This CSS will only apply to this placard. If you have CSS you want to apply to all placards, you can just add that to the CSS section of your theme settings. Next, type in the alt text for your image here. This will help anyone using a screen reader to know what this image is showing and is especially important to add if your image contains text. The link field is where you can add a URL. Adding a URL here will make the entire placard clickable. If you want your placard text to contain multiple different links, you can use the body text editor to just link to specific 
text or images. Next, we have the triggers section, which is where the real placard magic happens. Triggers are what will prompt a placard to show up in the search results, depending on what a user is searching for. Since I'm creating a placard promoting Mango languages, you might want to add triggers such as Spanish, French, German, and so on. You can also enter in phrases like language learning or world languages. So think like a patron. What are they most likely to search for when they're looking for their materials and what would make sense to have that placard come up for it? You'll also see that there is an exact match checkbox next to each trigger word or phrase. Clicking this means that the user would have to search for this exact word or phrase to trigger the placard with nothing before, after, or in between. For example, if you're making a placard promoting story time and add the trigger word children, you might wanna make it an exact match so a catalog search for children of the corn doesn't bring up your story time placard. Another thing to keep in mind with triggers is that Aspen doesn't currently have a way to support duplicate triggers across multiple placards. So if you plan to have a lot of placards, it might be a good idea to make a spreadsheet and keep track of which triggers you're using so they don't overlap. In the case of duplicate triggers, Aspen will just show the placard that first used that trigger. Scrolling down, you also have the option to target your placard based on which language interface your patrons are using. So just a reminder, switching the language interface lives up here. On this site, the only options are English and Spanish. Your site might have more language options though. So if I switched to the Spanish language interface and I wanted to target this to Spanish, that means that placard will only show up to users who are using the Spanish language interface translation. Keep in mind that this option doesn't automatically translate the placard into that language for you. It just makes it appear when someone is using that language interface. So this way you can create a placard in Spanish, for example, that would show up when users are searching with the Spanish language interface. So you can really target specific content or resources to different communities based on the language. If you want your placard to show up for anyone, regardless of which language interface they're using, just select all. Finally, you'll want to select the library and locations this placard should apply to, and then save. Now we can test by searching for one of our trigger words. And here it is. To view or edit your existing placards or add more, just go back to Aspen Administration, Local Catalog Enrichment, Placards, and there they are. Earlier, we talked about different ways to add images to your placard, and I wanted to mention that you can just use images for your placard without adding any text. This can make it really easy to create an image template for your placards in image design software like Photoshop or Canva to create a consistent, attractive look and feel to your placards and easily create new placards with new content. So let's say I made one of these images for my Mango Languages placard and I want to use that instead. First, I'll edit the placard. Then I'll clear out my placard text. After that, I can either add a new image with the image uploader here, or I can add an image from the text editor. Let's add an image from the text editor so you can see what that looks like. First, I'm going to click this remove button here and save my changes. That way it will clear out that image. Next, I'm going to click the insert image button, click the upload tab, and from here, you can browse for an image or drag and drop the image in this box. I have my image ready, so I'm going to drag it over, drop it in there. And any images you upload from these text editors will automatically get added to Aspen's web builder in the images section. That's what this URL source is. Next, if you're using an image for your entire placard without any text, 
You'll want to make sure that you add an image description here. This becomes the alt text that screen readers will use. So definitely add a description here or use the alt text field down below. That way, anyone using a screen reader will be able to read the text for your image. So you could paste in the full text that you used in the placard before. It's also going to tell you the dimensions of your image. If this was a really large image, like 2000 pixels by 4000 or something, you could delete that out and change the dimensions. And with this constrained proportions checked, it's going to resize it proportionally for you. I'm going to leave it as the original size and click OK. Now here is my image in the placard. Since I can't link any text, what I can do is add that link down here. Adding a link here will make the entire placard clickable. Save my changes. Now, when I search for Spanish, my new placard appears. And clicking that placard will take you out to that resource. Thanks so much for watching, and if you make any cool placards that you'd like to show off to us, please let us know. We love to see all the cool things you make. Thank you.